What's up, guys? I'm Jake Gatto. And welcome to my fight page. Now, we're going to be speaking because everybody loves fucking movies. And of course, everybody loves comic books. And I'm just going to give you my little review on none other than Avengers Infinity War. You know, um, I've also... I'm also a big Star Wars fan, and you know, I'm just, uh, I'm also a comic book collector, as well as, you know, I collect things as well, and uh, I think I'll be opening a channel very soon, but uh, I just want to give you guys uh, my insight and my review on it, and I'm just going to let you guys know that there there are spoilers, okay, so if you don't, if you don't want to even know anything as to, like, just anything, just, just leave now, you know, and uh, just catch me after you watch the movie. Okay, I think I've given you time to think about it and leave. Now, those that have stood, thank you very much. And, uh, well, I'm going to try to give you the best review that I can possibly give you. Um, not a fucking movie critic, but, you know, let's talk about it. Because uh, I'm a comic book fan. And, uh, you know, first off, I, I, I just got to take my hat, hat off to Marvel. I, I, I never, I never imagined Marvel would... would, would I mean, let's let, let's not even talk Disney. Let's not put Disney in this picture at all. Let's let's just talk Marvel Studios, okay? Let's talk Marvel. Like, Marvel has transcended to the the, the highest point that they can actually reach. I mean, th there's no other level than you know to reach. There's no other level. And uh, they started with Iron Man and everything else. Uh, after that, it, it was just amazing, amazing to actually see these characters, you know, come to screen. Now, the thing that bothers me, even with X-Men on screen as well, and the thing that bothers me is you have to keep it original. You know, you, you have to you have to follow this. There are a lot of guidelines that you know a lot of a lot of directors who who take on you know the task of directing you know comic book movies and live action films and it's 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 not a hard thing to do because I mean the storylines have been rich and the CGI is amazing. I mean, top of the line. It's just the technology is amazing. Okay, so let's just cut the bullshit, and let's just let, let's just let's just talk about something that no one is talking about before we get into this movie review because it has to do with this movie as well. Since we're talking Marvel, they have to stop making movies and unmasking the heroes. That if they didn't have the masks on, it wouldn't make them who they are. Like Wolverine, for instance. For Christ's sake. Okay, we know he has long, you know, long, long bearded face. And, you know, we know this. But we know Wolverine wearing the mask with the pointy, you know, it's 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 got to happen. And it never happened. And there were so many rumors. If you look at, if you look on YouTube, you look here in YouTube Universe, and you try to look at uh, reports of uh, Wolverine's costumes, even even when even if there were bullshit reports and rumors, you still can fucking see it. There are so many views, like 1.5 million views, you know, uh, 757,000 views, all all because they were wondering if. Wolverine was going to wear his fucking mask. Now they've done it here in they've done it here in Civil War. You know, I knew I I knew they were going to do this as soon as I saw Captain America Winter Soldier which is part 2. I already knew. I I see I was like no 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 no. no. Captain America needs his freaking mask. And all of a sudden, no mask. And they were doing it to a lot of heroes. A lot of heroes didn't have masks. And they looked just plain. Now, 
they they even went as far as in the Tom in the Toby Maguire series. In the Toby Maguire series, they even went as far as is having him with just the the, the the spider suit and and no mask. Now, how how dumb and asinine would that be? If you have your friendly neighborhood Spider Man swinging through your fucking neighborhood with no mask, just a suit. Pretty dumb, isn't it? Kills it. And when you gave Wolverine his own series uh, more than twice, he should have had the mask. Now, let's get into the Infinity War. First off, the movie was great. Okay, it was a very, very good movie. I have to say, Josh Brolin did a bad ass Thanos. Okay, he he is Thanos. That, that 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 great. I mean, Thanos made me love him, but really fucking hate him. Like, like uh, okay, I'm kind of old school. I'm 44 years old, guys. Uh, I just turned 44, April 30th, right? So, and I went to go see it, right? So, uh, I just have to, uh, you know. I haven't felt this way about a character since fucking Star Wars, like, since Empire Strikes Back. Like, I hated, like, I couldn't stand, I, I loved the way he looked, and this, of course, it's Darth Vader, but I couldn't stand Darth Vader. I was like, no, you bastard, like, how could you do this? And then, look what you've done to Han Solo, like, what the fuck, like, right? So, this is the way I felt about about Thanos, like, oh, man, he's badass, man, but I can't stand this guy, what, what, like, and, and if that can bring that out of you, you know, it's like, wow, and now, when I read the Infinity Gauntlet, that, you know, that comic book, that was great writing, man, and, and that, that, that was so, that was a treat, man, that was, a, that, that was a great treat, and, uh, that, that made me hate Thanos, like, as I read that book. And now, when I seen the movie, it's like, brought to live action. Josh Brolin did a great, great job. And the guys that animated him, you know, the CGI, beautiful, beautiful job. Now, Thanos was really, really badass. You know, the thing here is, um, you know, let's cut the bullshit. Uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, the comic book. It wasn't really that much of, like, a lot of fighting. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, in reality, he, you know, he would have he would have killed everyone with just pointing at him. <laughs> you know, but but at the same time, it's a live action movie. So I guess I guess it had to make sense where they couldn't make things too, too powerful. You know, you had to let them recharge or something like that, you know. And if anyone wasn't i mean if you really paid attention you know um there's a detail that every time he used the every time he used the gauntlet it, you know after he used it you would hear like a like you know sort of, sort of something like a recharging sound you know so i think that's why he wasn't able to you know and i don't think he was uh i don't think he i don't think he was able to wield it As you know, as 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 much as he was, you know, I'm I'm just I'm look, folks. What I'm saying here is, you can't you can't expect, and and we we couldn't expect too much like you know one shot kills. You know what I mean? Like okay, he points at her, oh broken, because you know? he did that at one point, and uh, you know um, he uh, he did it to the Drax, you know, and uh, and the other girl. Let's call her Ant Girl, whatever. <laughs> nah, let's not call it whatever. Bug Girl, all right. She had the I forgot her name. Um, but uh, she uh, Drax was was separated, and she was like uncoiled, so you know, sort of like you know, little party favorite things, and she was all over the place, and uh, you know, that sort of reminded me of uh, with with the Infinity Gauntlet, because there were a lot of references to the, to the comic book in there. Don't don't get it twisted. It, it was there, there were, uh. 
Like uh, when he took uh, Wolverine and made him into rubber and stuff and twisted a little all up, you know, because he took the Adamantium out. That like like uh, the Bug Girl was sort of like that. And then uh, I think uh, wasn't Cyclops because he encased Cyclops's head in the Infinity Gauntlet. He did something to somebody that he took him apart and they fell apart into block pieces in many pieces, and that's what he did to Drax. But of course, you know that that's not you know how they died or whatever. You know, um, came back. You know, f- of course, she did once he escaped. But uh, it's just you know we we just can't expect that shit to just overpower by him just pointing. You know, because like I said, now for those that are Hulk fans, I'm gonna tell you something right now. Um, Hulk Hulk got his ass handed to him. Okay, that's the first scene. Like the Hulk gets gets at. Thanos and he's pounding him down and he's doing all this Hulk smash shit and and uh you know one of the uh one of the uh you know the the guys that are with uh Thanos he says you know as the other guy was going to step in he goes no let 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 him have his fun you know meaning the Hulk so then all of a sudden Thanos just grabs the Hulk's forearms overpowers him straight uses like sh- fucking on box skills like my man Thanos gave him the Tony Jaw beat down the Hulk caught the Tony Jaw beat down he beat him the fuck up he really creamed him like he really really broke his shit and after after he took him down you know um it's like he knocked the fucking Hulk out and he left him in his form and then he killed Loki he choked the shit out of Loki. And uh Thor Thor was lucky that uh he spared him basically. I guess he left him to die because the ship blew up or whatever, the Asgardian ship, uh which if you saw Thor Ragnarok, you would you know, and you stood for the credits or whatever, you would understand. So it's crazy, man, it's crazy because they did a beautiful job and and at the end of every Marvel movie they did a beautiful job for other things just leading up to, you know, all types of uh, events. You know, so they did a great job. They did a great job there, you know, but uh, the Hulk for the whole movie does not come out. Okay, it's like. Bruce Banner and the Hulk, they sort of had this conflict where where David Banner's like, you know, now he's like, come out, come out. And the Hulk does not want to come out. The Hulk the Hulk is like very, very petrified. He is so scared because he got his ass beat. He's never gotten his ass beaten by anybody like that. And and it's like I, you know, the reason why the Hulk got his ass beat personally is because uh, you know, he had the, the purple stone, the gem, should I say? Okay. He had the purple. He had the purple gem. He had see. He had help. Okay. Now, we can always question that. Had he not had that gem inside that glove, or gauntlet, should I say, uh, would he had, would he have handed the Hulk's ass to him? I mean, would he have? Without that, I don't think so. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't, I don't think so. So, what's going to happen here, folks? So, I'll tell you right now. Uh, the Hulk does not want to come out. Him, Bruce Banner is having this conflict and he's telling the Hulk to come out and the Hulk does not want to come out. So, Bruce Banner's in the movie, he's in the war, but they give him a Hulk Buster. The same Hulk Buster that, you know, supposedly kicked the Hulk's ass through the city, whatever, in the, uh, you know, Avengers. But that's what happened in Civil War, so but that's what happened. So now... Now that I'm, you know, in and out with this Hulk, and I'm talking, that's this is how I'm trying to do the review, breaking down the characters, you know. Um, so the Hulk does not want to come out at all. So now, you know, Bruce Banner's in in the Hulk Buster. Okay. Now Tony Stark. Tony Stark doesn't die. Okay, Tony Stark. Um, he's basically on Titan. He's got the he's got the nano technology suit now that uh you know comes out of him, the Iron Man suit. So he basically completed what he wanted to do. 
Um, there's, he takes major damage. Like he, he gets pierced and he's able to repair himself. Like, you know, he's part of the technology now. Like it's crazy. Um, you know, so, so he's, he's able to repair himself. You know, and uh, it's just that suit, man. It, it, he just repairs himself. It, it's just awesome. And, uh, you know, Tony Stark, for the first time in this movie, is like he's he doesn't know what to do. He's totally lost. And in the beginning, uh, you know, when they all meet each other, Bruce 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 Banner says to uh, to Tony Stark, "Listen, you know, you just call Steve Steve Rogers because Thanos is coming. Like Thanos is coming. He's here. He's powerful. And and for Bruce Banner to be petrified and seeing that the Hulk is feeling the same way, now we understand why the Hulk doesn't want to come out, right? And then you have you know." Tony Stark, and Tony Stark is like, oh, man, okay, well, and he still doesn't want to reach out. It's just when he tries to, that's when, you know, Dino comes out and all this stuff. You know, so, did a good job. Now, the Scarlet Witch, the Scarlet Witch is awesome. She, she is powerful, man. She's powerful, as she should be. Now, in the comic book world, the Scarlet Witch is known as Magneto's daughter. And now, I don't know if they're ever going to tie that together. I don't know. It would be great if they followed the damn storylines and not break them apart like this, even for movie purposes, because you are you are getting everything and all the materials instead of giving references. Just do it. You know what I mean? Like, just do it. But it, it it's, you know, she is powerful. And, you know, there's a part in the movie where, you know, Scarlet Witch, she's taking care of vision because you know vision's weakened and he's uh he has uh the stone in his forehead of course and she has to protect him or whatever and she's trying to keep the black order away which is Thanos' uh you know guy's special sort of like a special op group that he got you know so he's trying to keep she's trying to keep him away or whatever and that's when you know uh captain america's scarlet i mean uh, captain america the black widow uh you know uh, Falcon, you know, they come to the rescue, of course. But uh, the Scarlet Witch, you know, is a part where she just battle of Wakanda. They they they're trying to take the stone out, this gem, should I say, without trying to harm anything that's inside his the nerve endings, you know, that are attached to it. You know, they're trying very much not to uh, damage vision. You know, they're trying to remove the stone and at the same time repair the nerve endings by itself so he can work by himself, right? They just didn't, you know, this was this was uh, uh, T'Challa's uh, sister, the genius. You know, she had figured that out. And uh, <laughs> and uh, Bruce Banner and, uh, you know, Tony Stark, <laughs> they were like, why didn't, no, actually it was Bruce Banner. Why didn't we think of that? You know, it was, it was great. Uh, it was a great movie. But... Now, they try to do that, and she, you know, they need help on the battlefield, and the Scarlet Witch comes down and does something where she just takes out half of these fucking demon, whatever they are, coming from Thanos. They got, like, four arms on each side of their fucking... Awesome, awesome. These guys look crazy, right? And uh, she takes out a whole bunch of them. So, I forgot the girl's name from Black, uh, the Black Panther. Ugh. The head guard that he has, uh... You know, let's call her Michonne, right? So she comes out and she says, uh, why was she not here earlier? It it, it, it was hilarious, on time, comedy. It, it was great, you know? And uh, the Black Panther does his thing, of course, you know? Um, Infinity War had the feel of every Marvel movie you've seen, you know? It had the feel of every Marvel movie you've seen. Now, when we go to Captain America, of course, he came back with a beard, of course, you know, looking older, uh, you know, not wear, not donning the red, white, and blue suit, you know, just wearing some special op or whatever. But he was given these two vibranium uh, hand dagger stabbing shield shooting thingies, right? And uh, he, did, he did his damage. He did what he had to do. Um, 
thing here is, uh, he, you know, like I said, you know, Captain America was on some new age stuff, you know, no mask, no nothing. You guys got to stop that. And this is why, you know, Marvel fans, especially old school fans like myself, you know, are starting not to like this because we don't want to see, you know, identities need to be hidden. I mean, whatever happened to that? You know, wasn't that the moral code of comic book uh, heroes and stuff and keeping their identity safe and, you know, but anyway, so Captain America does his deed, you know, he, he does his badass, of course, uh, Winter Soldier, Bucky, of course, does his thing, you know, he gets his new arm, awesome, uh, I also like it when uh, he says the, uh, uh, T'Challa uh, says the white wolf needs to be awakened because, of course, you know, they had him in Wakanda. It was great. It was awesome. And uh, let me see what else. Uh, it was, I mean, this movie was actually packed. Now, a lot of people had complaints about this movie going back and forth because they broke up in groups, you know, trying to get stones and stuff. And they broke up in groups. Now, you know, I liked it. I liked that 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 the movie was going. It wasn't, at least it wasn't a flash forward, you know, it's a past, present, future type thing. No, this was going on. It's a war. It's a war. Like it's taking place all over the damn universe, like it did in Infinity Gauntlet. There were certain places that everyone went to, and dimensions and stuff, right? So this is what was happening, and that it was just great. I mean, it wasn't exactly like the comic book, but it, there were a lot of references, you know, and. Uh, I'm, I, you know, but let me continue. Uh, you know, Gamora, of course, you know, she dies. Uh, I think it was the Power Stone. She knew about the Red Stone, the Power Stone. So when she knew about the Red Power Stone, she basically uh, was sacrificed by Thanos because she had to go in, you know, because she knew. So he knew... Uh, he had her sister, you know, levitating and being torn apart because she's robotic. So he tortured her until he got something from Gamora. She watched and she told him the the, the, the location. He told to show me. She took him there. Of course, uh, he wasn't going to get the stone unless he sacrificed something he loved. Of course, Gamora was his daughter by adoption and slaughter, of course, because he slaughtered her homeland. They also show that in a, in a, in a back a back flash, you know, um very briefly fast i love the way it was delivered it was quick the most i say the flashback was it was about maybe 60 seconds a good minute awesome you know it's like get to the point let's get it there boom this is what happened awesome with a lot of information you know so that's what happened so basically you know he actually cried you know thanos cried and just uh threw her once he threw her and yes she was broken in half and shit like not in half literally but her legs were twisted and all that shit like you know um it's just uh, it's sad, you know, and he got the stone. So now he had all the stones and, of course, you know, he got it from Vision as well. And, you know, he snaps his finger. Half the population dies. The existence. Right. Then... The end credit scenes, the, the the end credit scenes. Um, you have um, let's see, you have uh, Nick Fury, and I forgot the agent's name. So the agents and Nick Fury are out there, and uh, just basically, man, listen, people started disappearing. The agent disappears. Nick Fury is getting some type of communicator. It looks it's like a cell phone sort of type thing, flip thing. But he hits this uh, distress signal thing, and uh, it, it's basically Captain Marvel. Shows the symbol, and then it just cuts off from there. You know, now my 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 whole thing here is in the Infinity Gauntlet. Adam Warlock was there. Now, if people, if 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 Anyone remembers uh, there was a part I think in this movie, if not in this movie, somewhere in the Marvel Universe, I I'm not mistaken, I've overheard someone said we we've created Adam. 
right? So I'm wondering if they say they've created Adam. Are they talking about Adam Warlock? Is Adam Warlock going to cocoon and come to the existence of, you know what I mean? Like, is this going to happen? Because there's no way anyone is going to defeat Thanos. He actually got to do what he wanted to do. Watch the sunset and smile. He did it, right? So what's going to happen here? Is Thanos the almighty now? Like, because he's got, he's got, he's got that glove. So with them gems and he controls everything, reality, like, you know, as a space, uh, time, you know, so what's going to happen here? Is Adam Warlock going to show up with Captain Marvel and the Nova Corps as well? And maybe the humans? Is this going to happen? Be- you know, is, is, is the tribunal going to show up? Like, is this going to happen? Now, those that haven't read the original Infinity Gauntlet, read it and you will see what I'm talking about. A lot of motherfuckers were needed badasses. The, the living tribunal, for Christ's sake, it were needed to defeat Thanos. Captain Marvel, now, should not be this ultimate, ultimate to defeat Thanos. That would make no sense. Because if that's the case, then you might as well make the century. He's an Avenger, right? But it is what it is, man. This is this is what Disney does. You know, they 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 tend to water stuff down and try to throw in their original original stuff. But the thing is that they're failing to throw the stuff that made the characters original, which are original color designs. You know, the original color and the original designs to the costumes. I mean, look, Miss, you know, if you're going to have Miss Marvel, l- look at Watchmen. They had no problems making guys that were just dressing up like superheroes, you know, um, you know, like that chick, she had this tight, you know, she looks, you know, that's the way that, that Miss Marvel would, would be wearing stuff. I don't, I don't understand why they don't have them wearing the original costumes. Forget all this feminine crap, feminist crap, should I say. Let's just forget about all this shit, okay? Because it's just fucking movies up, okay? In comic books, they wear skin tight stuff. It should happen. Let it ride. Because it's not it's not looking good. You know, comic books are comic books. And if you're going to make live action comic book movies, you've got to do these things. And leave the costume designs alone. Don't make no no. We don't want to see someone who's supposed to be wearing a mask that we know is supposed to be. How the fuck is Batman going to be Batman, let's just say, if DC goes and, and, and just leaves him with just his suit on? Because they tried that shit. You know, they think it's cool to have the suit on with just his face exposed. Get the fuck out of here. That's a bore. No, no. You're defeating the whole purpose. So the, these guys need to have their mask on. If these guys reboot anything of an X-Men and they have Wolverine, he needs to have a motherfucking mask on. If they're going to start X-Men all over again, I'm suggesting they start with the Beast where he had his mask on and he just, you know, was just um, not blue and hairy. He just had, you know, the original X-Men. You know, he had the, sort of like the puck from uh, Alpha Flight. He had that sort of like the mask on and... uh you know, his feet were exposed in his forms. He sort of looked like a sort of like, like a miniature silverback, you know, but, you know, human flesh tone. That's what they need to do, you know, and show if they're going to change him up, change him up. Originally, you know, the upgrades of the suits, but with the original designs, you know, you can't you can't continue to do this because you're going to turn the you're going to turn the fans off. You know, you're going to turn the fans off. And you're going to kill the characters. Otherwise, that this has been my Infinity War review. And uh, it was great. A great movie. You know, uh, take the kids to go see it. If they scare easily, 
and you know they're not good with faces then don't take them because Thanos and you know the Black Order they're they're you know they're very menacing they look menacing they're terrible looking these guys look crazy they look very fucking crazy and uh, the kids the kids are probably not gonna like that face you know listen when I saw The Exorcist when I was younger you know and even to this day that face stays in my face you know stays in my head. You know, uh, it's not that I'm scared of it. It's just, you know, the design and everything. It's just the way it looks. It's crazy. It freaks you out. It's something that stains the mind. So, you know, if your kids scare easy with faces, don't take them. But if your kids love, you know, all of the creature effects and everything and they understand and they're old enough, then take them. It's a blast. You know, uh, it's a great date movie as well. It's great, man. Just check it out. Otherwise than that, thank you for joining. God bless each and every one of y'all. Stay vigilant.